Hi students. So this week we are going to learn how to restore those old photos that your family has. What a great way to connect with your family over the Thanksgiving break. Photo restoration project. So you can see from the photo, um, we've got this old blemished image and then this is the restored image looking good. So standards, understand the importance of pre-planning a project in terms of audience, purpose, timeline, page arrangement, production method. We're gonna just work on these steps. For some of us, it's kind of intuitive. We just do these things and we don't really think about it, but we're just gonna break it down for those of you who might uh, consider planning a weakness. Next, we wanna look at um, some other standards that are specifically related to Raster graphics. Uh, remember, raster graphics are the pixel based graphics. So, uh, restoring images, huge one. So, that's what you're learning how to do today. Uh, using layers, you've already done that. So, this will be just more practice on that. I'm going to teach you what a mask is. You guys have all worn masks on Halloween. Maybe you haven't worn a mask on Halloween, but you know what a mask is. Um, apply and maintain transparency or alpha channels. And that's gonna make more sense as we get into the lesson. So let's break these standards down. So who is our audience? We're gonna have two audiences for this one, family and classmates, okay? So you can share this with your family via the computer screen, gather around folks, uh, email, social media, and you can print these restored images and you can share them with your family on the Thanksgiving holiday when you're all gathered together or you can print them and put them in holiday cards. You're also going to share these with your classmates. I'm going to have you publish to Google Slides this week. Raise your hand if you've used Google Slides before in your classes to publish your work. Okay, well Google Slides are like a presentation where everybody has access to be able to post their work to it so you can all see each other's work. And you're also going to publish this to your Spark Video portfolio. If you haven't started your Spark Video portfolio, you're starting to fall behind on that. Um, there is a lesson in the content, so go and make sure that you get that started. Okay, let's identify the purpose. Why are we doing this? Well, I want you to connect with your family. Remember, we talk about connection um, and those visual art standards. Well. Ask members of your family to email photos that need to be restored. Or ask members of your family to bring some old photos with them to your holiday function. And then you can restore these photos for your family. Uh, the purpose for your classmates is to inspire them with your skills and to teach and learn from each other. Timeline, so what does planning look like? So I'm making this video, it's Monday, November 25th. And you're going to have all the way through Thanksgiving, all the way through that weekend, and then I want you to submit it to me by Monday at midnight, okay? So you have a whole week. All right, so here's a couple of ideas of how you could plan this out. One, you could ask family members to email you old photos that need to be restored. If they could get those to you by Tuesday, if you emailed them today and asked for that, um, then you would have time Tuesday and Wednesday to restore those photos. Then Wednesday, you can go to Walgreens or Walmart or wherever you go for 24 hour prints. Uh, or actually, no, uh, what am I talking about? 24 hour, one hour, one hour prints, right? Um, and you could have um, those images printed. And when Thanksgiving comes and your family's all there, you could share the images with your family on Thanksgiving. That would be a fun way to celebrate. Um, another idea for your planning, if family members can't email those to you and they only have like hard copies and old photo albums, have them bring their photo albums to Thanksgiving dinner. And then you can take photographs of those old photos and you can restore the photos. Once again, you're gonna submit those to me by December 2nd, right? You'll go to Walgreens or Walmart and you'll make uh, print copies of the restored images. And then you can send copies to your family members in your holiday cards. What a great gift to share with your family. 
So this is all about making connections, right? Doing something meaningful. We're not really arranging a page um, like on a website or anything, but if we were, that's where we would take this into consideration. But what we are doing is we're publishing these one to the Dropbox. You're going to submit the before and after JPEGs and your GIMP.XCF file. So this is how I want them named. They don't have to be exactly named like this, but the first and last name does need to be at the beginning. So it could be first, last in the original, first, last in the restored, and then your first, last, restored.xcf. So I want your GIMP file and both your before and after images uh, in the Dropbox. And then you don't have to do that for more than one. Just pick one just to show me that you did it. Now with Google Slides, I don't mind how many you post. And anytime you are posting to a public forum in this class, you do not need to put your full name, nor do I ever want you to put your full name. I just want you to put your first initial and last name if you're comfortable with sharing your identity. If you're not comfortable with sharing your identity, then don't put your name at all, okay? So don't feel like when you publish to a public forum in this class that you have to um, tell everybody who you are and show off your work. Because I know some people are embarrassed and they're like, I don't really feel like I'm that good at this and I'm kind of embarrassed about it. I'm sorry if you feel that way because I certainly don't want anybody to ever feel like they're not good at something in this class. I just um, love it when you all share with each other and you can learn from each other. So please don't hesitate to just keep it anonymous if that's um, how you feel. And um, so you're going to publish the before and after images to the Google Slides. And if you want to do more than one set, knock yourself out. And you can also add text to the slides uh, so that you can, and there's even notes. I'll show you how to do this. But you can um, leave each other comments, ask each other questions, give each other pointers, whatever it may be. So use this as a form of communicating with each other. Then we have the production method. So you're going to first start with a good composition. And yeah, we're restoring old pictures, but the composition, what I mean by that is that you're taking a good picture of the picture, okay? And I'll explain that. And then you'll open GIMP, you'll make a duplicate of the original, always duplicate and work on a different layer so that I can see the image that you started with. Um, and then to restore the cracks and blemishes, you're, I'm gonna teach you how to use the clone tool. That's the really the best tool. The heal tool is eh. Um, and then add color if you want to. This is totally optional, but I will show you a couple of different ways to add color. And we're gonna start talking about masks. Masks is a kind of a complex concept. It's a little bit abstract. Um, but I'm going to make my first attempt at demonstrating what it is. And who knows, maybe you'll get it right off the bat. Okay, so starting with a good composition basically means that you're taking a picture of an old damaged photo, okay? Um, but you're going to make sure your image size settings on your camera or the phone, if you're using your camera on your phone, are the largest they can be. So go into your camera settings and make sure that you have the highest resolution you can get, okay? So maybe that is nine, um, nine megabytes or three megabytes. If you do three megabytes, that should be sufficient for one picture. You don't have to go up to nine or 12 or anything that big. But um, if you have the options, go large, okay? Because you're gonna be taking a picture of a small picture and um, you're gonna wanna be able to blow it up on the screen and you're not gonna want it to be all super pixelated when you do that. So change your settings so you're getting a big image with lots of resolution, lots of pixels per inch. Then you're going to prepare to take the photo um, by making sure that it's on a surface where the light's not creating a glare on it, uh, where you can position yourself right above it to take the photo straight on, not at an angle, without you casting a shadow in there. So you might have to play around with lighting in different areas of the room on different surfaces to get it just right. If it's in a photo album and you can take it out, that would be helpful because those little plastic covers might create a glare. 
All right, or if you don't have any of your old just for the sake of getting your points and demonstrating that you learned how to restore an image, you could search one up on Google Images. Remember to go under Tools and look for Fair Use. Um, you can just look up old damaged photos or something like that, black and white photos. Um, that need to be restored, you can do a search like that. And remember, you always want to get large and fair use for non-commercial use with modifications. So I wanted to illustrate what I meant by this. So if let's just say that this little thing right here is your photo and it's laying flat on the table. You want your camera to come right above it and take it from the top down so it's square on. So it's like this, totally perpendicular to your camera view like this, totally perpendicular, right? You don't want it to be skewed and taking it at a side angle like these over here, taking it at a side angle. That's just gonna give you this weird skewed version. You're never gonna be able to make it look like that from a skewed, because that's a parallelogram. That's not a square, right? You need it to be a square or a rectangle. Okay, don't take it at an angle, all right? And then make sure that you don't have any glare on it like there is down here. Here's a picture of somebody with their photo album and they're taking that picture straight down onto it. There it is, straight down at a 90 degree angle with that surface of that table. Okay, the only thing here is though, lift up that page and just um, make sure that you're just taking a picture of the picture, not of that little sheet that goes over it, right? Okay, so you understand what I mean. Yes, you do. Okay, perfect. Um, this is due Monday, December 2nd at midnight. You're going to publish your before and after and your .xcf file to the Dropbox and to the Google Slides. So um, that's, that's just an overview. Let me show you how to do this. So first, if you are having to find a restored image, um, I'm just gonna search in old black and white photos that need restoration. And I'll just click on that. And that's going to bring up stuff. And then, of course, I have to um, just click on images. Make sure that you're in images. Comes up with a ton of them. Let's see what happens when I narrow it down from usage rights to labeled for non-commercial use with modification. Probably not going to have as many. Look at that. Not very many. I put in a search for Photoshop old photo. And I came up with this, I opened this up, and I snagged a picture of this, and I'm just gonna include it in the file. Honestly, sorry, there just weren't very many options. So the next step is going to be open up GIMP, okay? And um, do remember that if you're ever, like things are just way off, remember under Windows you have single window mode if your docs are all separated. And you also have edit, preferences, and uh, let's see here, um, window management, you can reset your saved window positions to default values right here, okay? So that was under edit, preferences, window management, reset, okay? And then you click okay, and then you have to close out GIMP, and then you have to restart it. You might have to restart your computer if that doesn't work, okay? Excellent, so I am going to file open because I have saved a picture of myself that I'm going to restore or if you want to um, copy, you can edit, um, paste as new layer if you've copied one or you can download the image that is in the directions and if you save that to your computer, you can file open that, okay? So I'm gonna click open, and I have my image design in pictures, so I'm just gonna scroll down and look for my image design folder, which for some reason, all my names are not in alphabetic order, and I just switched them back into it. I'm in the 1920 block two under restoration. There's a photo for restoration. This is the one that I shared with you. Okay, and I also added in an old photo of my grandma and grandpa that could use some restoring. I've got a picture that I pulled off the internet that was fair, fair use. And um, then I also have this picture of myself. This was the one that I was going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. 
and says something about having an embedded color file and I'm just going to say convert and here it is. So if I grab the zoom tool and I kind of go like this, you can see that there are some issues and let's see if I hold down the space bar, I can actually just move my mouse around. So try that shortcut today. Hold down your space bar and move your mouse around so that you can get a view of your image. So there are lots of things that could be restored. The first thing I'm seeing is this looks like a fingerprint on the image right here. So the first thing we need to do is um, we need to make a duplicate layer. So I'm going to right click. Um, I'm actually going to double click on that and I'm going to call it my original. I always like to have everything clearly named and then I'm going to hit enter. I'll right click on that now and duplicate that layer and this is going to be my work layer. Okay. So if you have things labeled, that will really help you to distinguish what you're doing. I'm going to hide that layer and then click right here to lock it. I don't want to have that layer selected though. I want to make sure that I have my work layer selected before I get started. So now that I'm in my work layer, I am going to show you how to use the cloning tool. So first thing we need to do is click save. So file save as and I'm just checking out my breadcrumb trail and it does show that it's in my image design folder and my restoration folder here of course I need to name it so I need to name it with my first and last name and I'm going to call it restoration r-e-s-t-o-r-a-t-i-o-n restoration okay and then click save and as usual, the name of the file is up at the top. Okay, so now that I have it saved, I've got a little more RAM and I can start hovering my cursor over. Okay, so we're gonna find the clone tool. Now there are two different clone tools here. One of them is perspective clone tool. That's not the one that you want. You want the clone clone. So I'm going to click the clone clone tool. And um, what you would normally be doing with the clone clone tool is you're going to hold down the control key and select an area that you want to clone. So let me give you an example. Let's say I wanted to clone this bush right here. So I would hold down control, click on the bush, you see the little plus there, and then I'm gonna go someplace else and I'm gonna start painting. And you'll notice that it is painting an exact clone of that bush okay so now I'm not really liking the brush that I have so I'm gonna go ahead and start addressing my brush issue right now I'm gonna click Save to give me some RAM now I can see the size of my brush um, it's a pretty good size brush I guess um, for the job let's make sure I'm, I'm just gonna go with yeah it's got a fuzzy edge so I guess that's the best looking brush I'm gonna get right now I want you to remember that you can always hit control Z. So obviously I'm not going to keep that there. So I'm going to hit control Z and boom, it's gone. Okay. So ultimately though, I've got a little bush on this corner and I've got two choices. I can either get rid of that altogether or I can try to fix it so that it still has the bush in there. If I did that, I'd probably want to hold down control and um, maybe click a little bit of this bush over here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click my cloning point where it's gonna pull my clone from here. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna start painting. And I am gonna, you know, kind of paint in a bush using this one. And I can hold down control and click a different start point. So, and I can come over here and I can yeah now you might not be crazy about what you're doing maybe I'm gonna come down here and try this instead that might be better yeah or hit <laughs> control Z and go you know what that's just really not working another option I have is I can just make this street come over here so how about if I hold down control and I just click to clone a piece of the street and now I'm just gonna instead make it so that the street comes over to this part too. 
And if I keep going, it's going to end up, this little dot's showing me that it's going to start hitting my hair. So I had to pick it up and kind of start it over again. So here I am just putting the street in next to that tree. Now I can get the edge of that tree. I can hold down um, control and clone a little piece of that tree and come down here and make sure that I have a nice edge there. Okay. Um, I can hold down control and get this ground right here and come over here and duplicate it a little bit. Sometimes you have to clone in a couple of different places to make it look good. There, so now that bush is gone and I'm going to click save. And I think I will use this smudge tool. You probably are familiar with using that in a different lesson. I'll zoom in a little bit on this spot over here. Whoops, I thought I hit my zoom tool, but let me click save again. Zoom, I'm gonna just click and drag a rectangle over the area that I'm interested in looking at. I wanna see it close up. Um, I'm gonna grab my smudge tool after I save, because this is using a lot of RAM. And I'm just gonna come over here and smudge these pixels together a little bit so that they look more cohesive and I can probably get some of these pixels uh, coming all the way out to the edge of the tree. Remember, hold on your space bar and you can move your image around. Cool, oh look, I'm finding some issues up here that I might need to use my clone tool. I'm gonna click save. Look at all of that, the way it's kind of got lines up here. Those probably aren't supposed to be there. So let me grab my clone tool again. I'm gonna hold down, um, oops, I've got my space bar. Instead, I need to hold down control, click a point that I'm cloning from, and then just come across. And I can clone that line right out of there. Um, the other thing I could do is just crop it at that point. So let's see. Alrighty. I'm gonna come over here a little bit. Oh, the whole thing, I'm, it looks like I'm probably just gonna have to crop this image up at the top. So let's go ahead and go view, zoom, fit image in window. Shift control J is the shortcut for that, but for some reason that just doesn't even seem like a shortcut to me. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of cropping to get rid of that top edge that I can see. I obviously have issues with. Um, I'm going to just grab the crop tool and draw my rectangle and wherever I want that to go and then click on the inside and there, now that edge up at the top is gone. I don't need to worry about that anymore. And how does that look over there? I got rid of that bush, that looks good. If it doesn't look so good to you, you could always grab that smudge tool and I wanna see my brush, so I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna make my brush bigger. Remember this shortcut? The brackets on your keyboard, you can increase the size of your brush by using the right bracket. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna get a little bit of smudging going on in this street because there's just a little spot over there that just, to me, just looks a little off. So I'm gonna smudge that just a bit. Okay, and I might smudge this a little bit too. Okay. Eh, maybe I don't really like that, but hey, I did it. So let's go ahead and go file, save, and let's zoom in on this area in here. I'm just gonna zoom a little bit at a time and just kind of go around and look at things that might need to be fixed. I'm gonna hold my space bar and move this along. Um, it's... <coughs> Okay, so um, I, it's really kind of pixelated just because I'm taking a small image and I'm blowing it up. So there's not really too much I wanna do with that, but I do see a couple of areas where I could touch it up. I'm gonna grab my clone tool. I need to decrease the size of my brush, so I'm going to use that left bracket and just clicking on that to make my brush size smaller. And I'm going to hold down control to click this black area in the coat and then I'm just gonna paint over that little black mark. Here's another spot over here. I'm going to click to select the area that I wanna clone from and then I'm just going to paint over those little white spots. Perfect. I'm going to hold down my space bar and move this over and I see I have another little blemish over here in the bush. Click save 
and control uh, click a little spot that I can clone from and come over here and just create a little more bush. I need to clone this bar coming down so I'm going to click control click to grab that spot and then just bring it right down here. Whoops, but notice it's getting the white part because that was actually a part of the image. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher and grab from up there so that I don't have that issue. Okay, perfect. So that's fixed. I have a little spot right here. So I'm going to clone the cement and paint that cloned area here. It looks so good. You can't even tell, huh? Okay, holding my space bar and I'm just moving the image around by just moving my mouse. Here's a spot I want to fix. So hold down control, click a piece of that jacket and paint over. Nice. Okay, what else? Oh, there's a little piece in my pants. Oh, look at that red spot in my pants. <laughs> that could be a stain, who knows. So I'm gonna hold down control and I'll just grab that little spot in the crack and then just go right there. That is so cool. Now this might be a good place for the heel tool. So let me go ahead and click save. Now the heel tool is the band-aids and what it does is it combines a little bit of the spot that you picked a clone from and the spot where you have the issue. So if I go ahead and hold control here and now I brush over this crack, I don't know if that's much better. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm not crazy about the heel tool. I'm gonna just, um, probably end up control Zing that. So let's see, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. And I'll grab my, my smudge tool here and I'll just kind of smudge this a little bit so it looks more natural. That looks great. I've got a little crease on there that's a little bright. I'm gonna get rid of that by smudging. Um, I notice I have some other things. I don't know what that is behind me. Did I sit on a piece of grass or what? holding down my space bar. There's also this piece of wood, but I think that's actually a part of it. Mm, there is this little white thing that could be part of my trim, but I'm gonna get rid of it. File, save, grab my clone tool, hold down uh, control, click and grab a spot, and just come in here and paint that out. There's a little flaw in my zipper. There's lots of little flaws in this image that could be fixed. Could go around and just be really meticulous. I'm going to get rid of this little spot here. So this is hold down the space bar and move this. This is a little rust mark. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, holding down control and grabbing a spot to clone from. Oh, that looks so much better. So much better. So yeah, this is cool. You can get rid of all kinds of blemishes. This is great. Um, what else do we have? Holding down the space bar and moving it. I don't want this little this little puddle from my boots. Oh, I'm getting rid of it. That's great that that's there, but it, we don't need that, right? So yeah, I'm gonna come over here and get some of this dark stuff. And um, I'll probably end up blending a little bit because you can kind of see that stark contrast. So that's where blending comes in really nice. Blend, there we go. Blend it together, that looks better. There we go. Okay, holding down my space bar, moving up the stairs, and I see a couple little spots here I wanna fix, so I need to save, grab my clone tool, control click to grab a spot to clone from. You always want that spot that you grab it from to be very similar in color to the area that you're cloning, and so it just takes a little bit of practice. You'll get it, don't worry. Um, and if you see an area that you know has stark lines around it, just grab that smudge tool and smudge it to blend it together. Okay, that looks great. All right then, holding down my space bar, moving up, space bar moving up, and ta-da! Looks like I have restored this image. Awesome, so I'm going to do my view, zoom, fit image in window, and there it is. So we can take a look. Here I have my original, so I'll go ahead and turn the eyeball back on and look at before 
after, before, after, before, after. I could get rid of that little branch right there. That thing is kind of driving me nuts, but it's okay. So then you're going to file, save. Okay, you've already saved the name. Now you're going to export it. File, export as. And whatever shows up here, whatever's visible, I'm gonna go ahead and hide that original. Whatever is visible here is what's going to export, okay? So export as, and you're not going to export a ping, you're going to export a JPEG. So you're just gonna erase the PNG and type in JPG here. If you're nervous about doing that, then this is where you can go down to the select file type, click the plus, and scroll down until you find the JPEG. If you click on that, it's going to change it to .jpg. So you can do it manually or the long way, it's up to you. Remember, when we export, we have to move this box over so that we can see the image before we click export. So click export after you've moved it, and then you're gonna get that image optimization box. Go ahead and increase it all the way to 100, and show your preview so you can see what your file size is at. It has calculated that my file size is only 233 kilobytes. That's way below where I want it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and click Export. Okay, perfect. So this is showing at 90% size. If it was at 100% size, this is where it would be. If I'm going to print this off, let's see, what's my resolution? Let's go into image, scale image, and it's showing me my resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Awesome. If I'm going to the printer, it needs to be 300, okay? So keep those uh, pixels there. If I convert this to inches, this is going to be a one by two inch image. What that means is that when I go to print this, it might look a little grainy, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. So this'll look a little bit grainy when I print it, but that's okay, it doesn't look that bad. So now I want to save the original JPEG, and um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide the work layer and make the original layer visible so I can see all the blemishes. And then I will go file, export as, and this one I wanna call the original. And that's how you can get your original, original JPEG named with your first and last name in the beginning in your folder. And once again, slide it over so you can see what you're doing. Click X. Oh, is it under JPEG? It's already saying JPEG. Export. It's at 100, size 235. So, yep, you're good. You export that. Now you've got all three of your files. So, I'm going to click, I'm going to show both layers. Now, I'm going to click save one last final time to make sure I have all my changes. Now, I need to submit this. But wait, I just realized that we didn't address brightness and contrast, and this is something that I've told you that I always want you to do. Don't forget to go into colors, brightness and contrast, and I want you to make sure that you adjust your brightness and contrast so that you're getting a really nice pop. Now, because it's an old image, you might struggle with this a little bit. Um, let's look at the preview. So that was before, and this is after. It looks much better. I'm going to click OK. So remember the, your brightness and contrast. Now I need to click Save, and now I need to go ahead and I need to export again as. So if I want to do my original, I'm, I'm not on my original later. Right now you can see my restoration layer, so I'm going to save that again. Just going to export. And yep, I'm gonna replace it because I adjusted my brightness and contrast. I want it at 100%. I'm gonna click export. And then I'm gonna go ahead and now my original doesn't change. So the original is the original, but you can see a huge difference with the brightness and contrast and how that looks. So make sure you get that part done too. Sorry, I didn't go over that earlier. So I wanted to show you um, 
the folder where it's at. So we're in the week five restoration due December 2nd. So that's Monday. So you have beyond the weekend. Um, you have all the way until next Monday at midnight. Um, so I've got my original here posted and you can see those blemishes that were there and um, how I took out that bush. Yeah. Okay. And you can see my restored. And then the directions are here. Restore old damaged photos of your family. You're going to watch this video tutorial that you're doing right now. Um, you're going to publish in three different places. The Dropbox below, which is here. And uh, make sure that you read the rubric and that you fulfill all the requirements of the rubric. You're going to publish to the Google Slides, which are right here. And then you're going to also publish to your Spark Video portfolio. Remember, and I'll just go over this quickly, you're just going to Google Spark video you do not want a spark post i already noticed that someone created a spark post no post look at video ding spark.adobe.com forward slash video okay that's where you want to be you're gonna watch the video where i showed you how to do that before i'm going to log in right now and um, I log in using my Google account in that other video. I show you how to set up a Google account. So if you haven't done this yet, you need to backtrack. Go back and get this done. It was in a previous assignment. Okay, I'm not doing this. I'm skipping this. And I'm Xing out of this because I just want to go into my projects. Here is my image design portfolio. I'm just going to click on that. That's going to bring me back to where I was. And it takes a minute to load, so just be patient. Okay, I don't need the quick tips. I've already had them. Okay, so remember, um, I'm just going to go through my slides really quick. Uh, I have my Andy Warhol pop art. And uh, remember how you guys have been doing um, your theme. So this one was the wolf theme, and I kind of had shown you how I'd done some different wolf things in that video. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna get here to my last slide and I'm just going to add a new one and I'm gonna title this one text photo restoration. Okay, and I'll just do family connections. Okay, and you can post as many of those as you want. And I'm going to add a new slide after that one and this one's going to have the photo, so I'm going to click photo, and then I have to click upload. Took me right into the right folder, and I'm going to do the original. And I need to make that smaller. So click on that to decrease the size of it. And I'm wondering, is there a way, I don't think it's gonna let me do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this around a little bit and make it so that it's super obvious that I have these blemishes here on that slide. And I wanna keep that image on for three seconds. Oh, and the text, I don't want four seconds. I don't know why it wants to put text for four seconds. It doesn't take that long to read. Um, so then I'm going to make a new slide and that one is going to be the restored version. And so I can go photo restoration. And this one I need to, after it loads, make it so that I can see the whole project. So cute. Aww. That's so adorable. It looks just like my little daughter now. That's about how old she was. Okay, so now that I have that there, it's saved. I can preview it. Once that's done, you're good. You can just go back to your Spark uh, video homepage by clicking on that and your project should be saved there. You, you just wanna make sure you can open it up again and just check. 
Um, I'm going to just assume that since I was able to preview that it's there. So that's the first place, um, your Spark Video portfolio, right? It just takes a couple minutes to add your new work to it. It doesn't take long. You are going to submit it to the Dropbox. So uh, there is a rubric. It tells you how you're earning your points. Five points, your original photo with the blemishes, blemishes is locked in a separate layer. Your student, the student completed the restoration in a separate work layer. And 20 points, blemishes and cracks are restored. Five points, brightness and contrast are adjusted so the image pops. And five points, students submitted all three files named properly. So that's the first last original JPEG, first last restore JPEG, and your first last restore.xcf, okay? All right, so I'll be looking for evidence that you did all of those things. Then it says you're going to publish it also right to the Google Slides. So hopefully you've done this before. You're just going to click publish to Google Slides. It is going to open it up in a new window. And I'm going to show you how to get it done. So I'm just gonna to go to the first available slide and I'm going to post my original. Um, the way that I am going to do that, you can just go insert or there's actually a little insert image icon right here. So I'm gonna go upload from computer and I want my original and I want my restoration. I can hold down control and select a second. I can hold down control and select any ones that I want. So practice using control to select more than one. Um, I want my original and my restored. Hey, look at it popped up just perfectly on there. That's awesome. I'm gonna make that one just a little bit bigger so that it matches the other size. If I wanted to make a comment, I could say, uh, don't forget to adjust your brightness and contrast. Um, you could ask me a question. So everybody can add more comments here. Also remember in slides, you can lift this line up and you can write notes for your friends, okay? And remember, you don't have to post your name. If you do, only the first name and last initial or vice versa. Okay, never post your full name or you can just leave it anonymous, okay? Whatever works best for you. Um, this is for us to be able to see our work together so we have more of a, you know, class and team environment. We're not just doing it alone. So please take the time to come back and check this um, Google Slides document throughout the week and see what your classmates are doing. Fun way for you to connect over the holiday. Okay, and then you're also going to follow this breadcrumb trail back and you can um, submit to the Dropbox super easy. You all know how to submit to a Dropbox, but let me just show you everything you need to submit. Oh, I can't do it. It doesn't let me, but you're gonna upload let me uh, show you. Okay, yeah, here, it, this is my files. So I'm going to upload the Rachel Giroux original, the Rachel Giroux restoration. I know that these are JPEGs because I can see the pictures of them. And I'm going to submit my GIMP file. Remember, you can go to View and you can go to Details and it will tell you what kind of file they are. So you can see that the original restoration, these are my JPEG files and that this one right here is my GIMP file, okay? And for some reason, you can also see, gosh, usually I, I like to see the actual file type. It's not showing .xcf. Oh, well, it's just saying GIMP. Okay, but anyway, you get the idea. So you're gonna submit all three of those to the Dropbox, okay? Now, if you decide that you'd like to do something black and white, I'm going to go open and let's check on a photo that we could actually do some black and white with. So I had my grandma and grandpa photo here. So let me just go ahead and open this one really quick. And I just click convert. 
Okay, so here it is. So I could obviously get in here and do a lot of great stuff with this. Um, the first thing that I see right off the bat on this one is that it needs the brightness and contrast adjusted. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little pop of contrast, um, increase the brightness a little bit. Um, just do the best that you can. You can see that this has some interesting um, pixely feel. It was printed and taken a picture of. So I'm gonna click OK here. Um, and then maybe I just want to use a little bit of the smudge. Um, I'm not sure if that'll work. Let's save first. So save as this is Rachel, always first and last name, Jero, grandma and grandpa. And um, I'll just go ahead and put restored grandma and grandpa. And save that. Okay, I wanna check on the image size. It says that it's posting at 50%. If it's at 100%, that's how it looks. Down here at the bottom, that's where you can change that. I wanna go into um, scale image and just check to make sure it's at 300 pixels per inch. It is fantastic, because if I wanna print this, I need it to be that large. And just inches wise, it's only three by four inches. It's actually pretty small. Um, but the 300 pixels per inch is making it look bigger on the screen because the screen only has 72 pixels per inch. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's just remember, hold down the space bar. I can move him around. I'm going to try to get rid of some of this, um, these pixels on their faces just using smudge. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Just, just so you know, everything that you ever do is going to be an experiment. So I need a bigger brush, so I'm going to use my right bracket to increase the size of my brush and I'm just going to start blending and see what happens and it's not really the best not best plan so I'm going to hit control Z several times and get back to where I was mm, maybe I should just paint so I'm going to grab my paintbrush so this is where you can just get in and try different things so I'm going to try my paintbrush um, I am going to click on the foreground color and grab my color picker, my eyedropper tool, and pick the color of his head. Ding, got it. Now I'm gonna start painting. Perfect, so I can just kind of paint over that. Um, this is a really tough one with <laughs> this happening. Ooh, it's really hard. Um, might have to click on that foreground color again and grab a different color and paint a little bit of that. This is tough. So this would be a really tedious photo restoration project, okay? Um, I don't recommend you pick something this complicated. But what I wanted to demonstrate with this black and white really quick, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click Control Z and get it back to where it was. And I will decrease the size of this back to 50%. But I just wanted to show you that you can add some color and you can do that um, by grabbing a photograph where you have skin color. So like over here, I have some skin color. I can get this color picker and I can come over here and grab the color of my skin and go okay and then come back to this picture and I can grab my paintbrush after I click save and I can uh, decrease the opacity of my paintbrush and I probably want to get a new layer and I'm gonna call this layer paint and hit enter and I'm just gonna start painting that color which does not look good at all that doesn't look like a skin tone at all so I'm gonna hit control Z and I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna see if I can get a better skin tone color maybe a little oranger so click OK I didn't even have to go back there I just decided to move this around so I'm gonna come back and I'll try again that doesn't even look good at all. So, um, yeah, might need a might be might need a darker, but I can just come through and I can just paint over a little bit. It doesn't look that great. Trust me. I know. I know what you're saying. It's not very good. But this is an option. You can just paint. Ding. Add some color in there. Remember you do have an eraser. You do have control Z. Where's the eraser? Here it is. So if I go too far over his ear and his hair, I can get rid of it. Not a big deal. Got her hair over here. Um, but that is an option. Another option is 
scratch that, my bad. Okay, I'm gonna take this bottom layer and I'm going to duplicate the bottom layer. Okay, there we go, I'm gonna lock this bottom one. I'm gonna name this one Colorize. Okay, and so remember how we did colorization? Let's see. Colorize, way down here. Okay, so um, let's see, what do we wanna do? Let's do skin tone. So let's find a tone for the skin that we like. That might be a little too yellow. Okay, I'm gonna go with that for skin tone for now. And then I need to add an elf, wait, what do I need to add? I need to add a layer mask. And let's see, do I, I'm gonna do a black layer mask. I know you don't know what a mask is, but imagine if you have a mask over your face. If you put a mask over your face, you're not going to be able to see your face, right? That's the black mask, okay? So I'm putting a black mask on that makes full transparency. I'm gonna add that. And then you'll notice over here that you have a new little icon. This is the mask, okay? Well, what I can do in, I have to switch this so that I have white as my foreground color. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and anywhere I paint white on my black mask, I'm gonna be able to see through the mask. I know this is really abstract, okay, bear with me. I will keep my opacity a little bit lower. I'm going to um, click save so I can look at my brush. And yeah, I'll go a little, okay, let's look at the size of my brush. All right, it's pretty big. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna do their faces, okay? All right, so I've got my brush, okay? And I'm gonna start painting white. And when I do that, I'm painting on my mask. You're gonna see, remember how I colorized it? You're seeing the colorization now. You're thinking, that doesn't even look like skin color. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but I'm just trying to demonstrate for you how to get color on it. And this mask is, and this colorized feature is actually a great way to do it if you don't have the little stripes. Okay, perfect. So excellent, there's the face. I'm gonna use my space bar and move this around and get their hands. So painting their hands, look at that. Okay, and um, when you make an accident with the, with the mask, if you wanna get rid of that, since painting white is gonna make it so you can see through the mask, all you have to do is just click on that, paint black to um, get rid of those edges. So when you paint black, that puts the mask back on in certain ages, in, or sorry, certain places. Okay, so that's how you can um, go back and forth between the mask. Now, let's say I wanna give her dress a pretty color. Okay, so I'm going to um, view, zoom, fit image and window so I can see the whole thing again. And I'm going to create another duplicate layer. Duplicate layer, okay, unlock it. Let's call this uh, Dress Colorize. And I'm gonna right click and I'm going to add a layer mask and I want it to be black. Okay, there's my mask. Um, let's, actually I'm going to hit Control Z and undo the layer mask because first I wanna do Colorize. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put this on top of the other layer. Well, that's what I want to do, there we go. Okay, that way I can't see that yellow skin tone <laughs> right now. I just wanna colorize it. So I'm gonna to go to colors, colorize, and um, that could be a pretty color for her dress and I can play with the saturation, increase the intensity of it. Because her dress is black and white, it might not look that great, but yeah, that's it. That's what I wanna do for her dress. So I'm gonna click okay. I might have to click save here. Oops, let me try it again, sorry. Making a recording sometimes um, has its challenges. There we go. 
Okay, so click OK. Okay, now add your layer mask. Add your layer mask. Okay, you want it black. Okay, make sure you have white, so just flip this so the white's in the foreground. Grab your paintbrush. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm make sure my white is around my mask, not around the picture. It's gotta be around the mask. The mask has to be selected. Now anywhere where I paint, you can see that opacity. Isn't that cool? So those are masks. Very nice. And I can see their cute faces. On the, oh, um, on the colorization layer that we made below. Isn't that adorable? I need a bigger brush. Use your brackets. Get your big brush. Just use your brackets to enlarge your brush size. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I really like that feature of being able to colorize and use the layer masks to get um, into your specific areas. And the more times I go over it, the darker it gets, you'll notice. So caution with that. If you feel like it got too dark all of a sudden and you don't like that, then just hit Control-Z and go back. So I could continue colorizing. I could do the bushes. Um, I could do his jacket. Uh, a darker color using colorize. I could get her hair a different color. So that is one way that you can add some color. Um, fantastic. Well, if you'd like to add color, I'd be happy to give you some extra credit. Uh, so if you decide to add some color, that would be cool. I'd love to see it.